Hello everybody, there is a certain Dreamcast game that is kicking my butt, and I want to talk about it today. Hello, in case you haven't been to this channel before, I'm Kevin. I'm a nerd who has broad tastes in gaming. I sometimes play the Atari 2600 and I sometimes play PS5 and I play a lot of things in between those two. Lately, I've been playing a lot of Dreamcast with a long-term goal of finishing every finishable game in my collection. Here are the ones I've beat so far. Legacy of Kane is the only one of these that gave me some difficulty. I got lost a few times just walking around in that game and so I need Needed to consult a walkthrough. I hate having to do that, but that's what walkthroughs are for. It's a wonderful game by the way. But the game I want to talk about today is Vanishing Point. It was released in 2001 for the PS1 and the Dreamcast, and I've only played the Dreamcast version. It's like Gran Turismo. You win races to unlock more cars, and then you win races with those cars to unlock more. I'll say up front that Vanishing Point looks awesome for a 2001 game. The scenery around the raceway is gorgeous, and there's tremendous variety in the cars on the road. It looks like a first party game from that that time period. But I'm here to talk about what makes it challenging. When you begin, 99% of the game is grayed out. You have to unlock everything. There are only two cars available. The garage you use to upgrade the cars is also locked. And there's also a lot of additional features that are locked. To unlock those things, you have to take one of the cars into a tournament and finish number one in the standings. There's three tournaments for each car, which allows you to unlock three different things. There's also a bunch of secret cars, which, you guessed it, have to be unlocked. But those cannot be used in the tournament races. The tournament races are pretty much the key to unlocking everything in the game, so pretty much everything I'm showing you today will be based around the tournaments. Here's how many cars I've been able to unlock so far. But I've been at this point for weeks. I'm unable to unlock anything else in the game, despite my best efforts. There's six things about this game that I feel make it very difficult. So let me tell you what those are. Number one, these cars control in a way I've never felt before. It's hard to translate into words, but I'll give it a try. They are very floaty when you steer. There's a lot of momentum toward the side of the screen in which you're turning toward, which in turn causes me to try to correct by steering the other way. And I end up fishtailing back and forth all in the hopes of traveling straight again. I can occasionally execute a perfect turn if I go in just the right speed and push just the right amount on the analog stick, but it feels like luck when that happens. It's possible that the later cars handle a lot better, but for now, these are the ones I'm stuck with. I have to get them under control and I have to win races with them. Number two is, it's easy to crash, and when you do, you probably won't win the race because it takes so long to get the car going again. If you flip out and you end up turned around facing the other way, you can hit the Y button and it'll place you back on the road in the right direction, but it gives you a four second penalty. Isn't losing all your momentum penalty enough? To add insult to injury, when it places you back on the track, it sometimes puts you right in front of another speeding car, causing you to crash again. Number three is, there's a ton of traffic on the road, and many people are driving like they're drunk. According to the manual, you're driving on civilian roads, so that's why there's so much traffic. There's also other people who are racing, who drive much faster and much more aggressively. You know which ones they are because they have a little triangle above them. Some cars tap their brakes, others weave back and forth, and in every race there are crashes that happen right in front of you. Having to negotiate all that with the way the car handles is quite a pain. Number four, the garage upgrades are largely inaccessible, and the ones I've seen so far don't seem to help that much. As mentioned earlier, the garage is locked at the beginning of the game. But also, it doesn't unlock all at once. Winning certain tournaments with certain cars unlocks sections of the garage. Right now, I've only been able to unlock two things. One of them is tire pressure, and this one causes me to scratch my head. You can increase and decrease the tire pressure by 100%. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but if I decrease my tire pressure by 100%, doesn't that mean I have flat tires? It seems like it, but according to the manual, no changes in the garage can make the car unusable. I've also unlocked damping and I've used various configurations with that, and it doesn't seem to make much of a difference in my ability to win races. 
The other options I haven't unlocked include camber angles, toe angles, brake bias, and final drive gear ratio. I'm not a mechanic, but to me, these are the strangest tuning options I've ever seen in a driving game, but I'm sure they appeal to some people. Number five is, there isn't much info about this game out there. Unlike Soul Weaver, nobody seems to have done a complete walkthrough, either in text form or on YouTube. Somebody made a list of all the unlockables and how to unlock each one, but it gives no tips on how to win at the races, which is really what I need. Now somebody did do a walkthrough on the stunt driver feature of the game, which is a very small portion of the overall game. But I'm looking for a walkthrough as far as the upgrades and the order in which to unlock the cars and tips for navigating the tracks and stuff like that. Why isn't there that much out there about this game? Perhaps not that many people have played it because it didn't sell very well, even though it was on two systems. Or perhaps everyone just had too much difficulty with the game, so making a walkthrough was problematic. I specifically want to know more about the garage and how changing those settings affect the handling of the cars. I would like to see some people's actual settings that they have on their cars that have brought them uh, better handling. The game does have some built-in help screens that describe those settings, but it's very esoteric and very short. The manual itself doesn't say that much either. The final reason why it's so difficult is that the cutoffs for advancing are too high. For example, for this car here, I can unlock a new car if I finish first in the standings for Heat 3. Heat 3 is three tracks with three laps. I pretty much have to drive flawlessly through all three tracks to finish first in the standings. I've driven all three of them without crashing, but I still don't finish with a good enough time to finish first. This puts me in a dilemma when I play. I either drive carefully so I can better get past the traffic and not wreck, and be able to respond to those crashes that happen in front of me, or I can drive at a high rate of speed recklessly and hope to have enough luck not to flip the car around. Once you get at full speed in this game, you can get some great times, but the minute you hit a wall or another car, you just flip over like crazy. It's just very hard to find a middle ground between speed and carefulness in this game. The way it calculates what place you're in is one of the strangest parts of this game. I mentioned that other racers have triangles above their cars. You would think that when you pass them up, you would go up a spot, like from second to first or whatever. But that's incorrect. Passing them does nothing. Those people did not start the race at the same time as you. There's no starting line with a bunch of cars. The races are pretty much time trials. If you don't reach a certain time, you won't finish first. The ordinal number it gives you, first, second, third, and fourth, is only based on how your time compares to the goal time that the game specifies. At this point, I think a lot of you are probably thinking that this game isn't really as hard as I'm making it out to be. Perhaps that's because you've played it yourself. I admit I may just suck at the game. However, I have beaten a lot of other games. I showed you a lot of them earlier. And I have beaten Gran Turismo, and I don't remember that being very difficult. But I did have difficulty with Star Wars Episode One Racer. When I played it two decades ago, I wasn't able to finish the game. I got stuck at like the 80% mark, but if I try it again today, I may do better. So maybe driving games are not my area of expertise. Still, if you've played this game and you've gotten further than me, let me know if there's anything obvious that I should try. And let me know if I'm going about things the wrong way. I will mention I was using the regular Dreamcast controller. I do not have one of those Dreamcast steering wheels. It's possible that the handling may be better if I had one of those. And also, like I said before, I've never played the PS1 version, but if it is easier, let me know uh, because I might want to just jump to that one and start playing that one. But I'm curious to see what others across the internet have said about the game. And I want to see if they mention anything about not being able to get halfway through it. I found a review of it by Classic Game Room, a show I've talked about on this channel before. It's an old video, but here's what Mark had to say. Every car in this game floats, and that makes driving really frustrating because you're going to run into something and spin your car around and lose the entire championship on the last race and want to smash your Dreamcast into bits, which of course you do not want to do. 
That being said, the comment section of the video had a lot of people who disagreed with him. This guy said, once you unlock the higher end cars and the tuning options, it becomes a totally different game. With tuning, you can make the lousy floaty Mustang and even the Ford Ranger handle like a proper car. Well, the problem in my case is that I can't get enough of those tuning options unlocked, so I can't reach the point where it becomes a totally different game. The Video Game Critic, a website that has over 5,000 games reviewed, gave the game an F and pretty much echoed what Mark had to say. However, after reading various comments across the internet, I figured out Vanishing Point is actually a very treasured game, and almost everyone says that the controllers are challenging for a reason because you have to work your way up to the better handling cars. So what should I do? I normally would not walk away from a game I've already put so much effort into, especially a Dreamcast one. But it's not like I'm going to wake up one day and all of a sudden be better at steering. I've practiced the game as much as I can stomach and I still can't progress. So I'm going to walk away from it unless someone points out something to me that changes everything. If I do walk away, I won't be able to reach my goal of beating my Dreamcast library. But then again, who cares? It's not like I'm going to beat every game I encounter in life. Have you ever failed at a game? If so, which one? And I don't mean a game that was unenjoyable so you stopped playing it. I mean one that you wanted to keep playing but you had to stop because it got too difficult. And if you want to watch another Dreamcast video, I put one in the corner up there. It's one where I talk about why I played a Dreamcast more than any other game system. May your games make you happy and smart and may people respect you for playing them. So long everybody.